Hey, what's up guys? So in a previous video, I said I'd be installing assists on an XP 15,000, so let's get into it. Now, in order to use assists or refill cartridges, the printer's going to need chipless firmware install. Now, this printer's running chipless firmware from inkchip.net, and I'll put a link in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out everything I'm going to need. Of course, I'm going to need ink, and in this case, I'm using Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation ink. We're going to need our sys. Uh, again, this is Dynamite Gorilla, but follow along if you have a similar style sys. I'm going to need a pair of gloves to keep my hands clean, some isopropyl alcohol, a pair of scissors, and two different color markers. Now, I'll take the sys and all of its parts out of the box and set the box to the side. Now, I want to grab the dampers to get them ready for install. The bottom side is going to have the word in stamped on it, and that'll be the side I'm going to connect to the tanks. The top side will have the words up and out stamped on it, and that'll be the side I connect to the cartridges. Next, I'll take the silicone tube and lay it flat across the tanks. And then I'll mark the outermost tubes with different color marker. I then cut the tube in the center of the mark so that I have marks on both sides. Next, I'll take the tube from the tanks and separate them so that I can fit them on the bottom side of the dampers. And now I'll repeat those steps to do the same for the top side, making sure that the colors on my outer tubing line up. Good. Now I wipe down the side of the tanks with some alcohol. I'll remove the adhesive from the back of the dampers and press them firmly on the tanks for about 30 seconds. Now I can go ahead and fill and prime the cyst, but first let's take a closer look at the tanks. To the rear you're going to have the priming chamber where we're going to add the ink first so that we can prime the tanks. The center chamber is a vent chamber similar to the vent hole on your cartridges. You don't want to plug this hole while you're printing. You only want to plug it if you're moving or storing the tanks. And to the front you're going to have the main filling chamber or the dosing chamber. This is where you're going to add the remainder of your ink after you filled your priming chamber. So to prime the tanks I'm going to go ahead and make sure my air plug is removed and drop about 25 mils of ink. Then I'm going to insert that ink into the priming chamber. I'll place the plug back on the priming chamber and I'll tilt the tanks forward for about 30 seconds to move the air to the top of the priming chamber. Now let me remove this bracket so you can see better. And after about 30 seconds I'll stand the tanks up and remove the plug again and continue filling the priming chamber with another 10 ml of ink. Here's what it looks like on the magenta chamber. After adding the additional 10 ml of ink the level should be around the fifth line of the tank or about here. Now I'll close up the priming chamber and put the remaining ink inside the dosing chamber or the main filling chamber. After filling I'll make sure to replace the plug and keep the air vent open. Now with the tank filled and prime, I can start to prime the cartridges. I'll make sure that the ink shut off is in the open position. I'll take the 10 mil syringe from the kit. Remove the clear plug on the cartridge. Insert the syringe into the cartridge and pull up on the plunger and hold it until the ink starts to flow. I'm going to rotate the cartridge to the side and let the ink fill the side without the sponge first. And once it's filled I'll turn the cartridge right side up again and remove the syringe then reinsert it, pull up again and fill the side of the cartridge with the sponge. You just want to get close to the top here, there's no need to pull the ink out through the hole. I'll put the plug back in the cartridge and we're done for that color. I'll repeat those steps for the other colors. Once we're done, we'll plug up the vent holes and turn the ink shutoff valve to the closed position. This will help keep the ink from flowing out of the cartridges when I go to install them. I wipe down the left side of the printer with alcohol and install the bracket and holding it down for 30 seconds. going to make sure it's flush and level with the top of the printer and then I'll place the tank on the bracket. Now it's time to take out the old refill cartridges. So I'll go to the menu and under maintenance I'll select ink cartridge replacement 
And when the carriage moves into position, I'll unplug the machine. And this is going to allow me to move the carriage back and forth freely. I remove the old cartridges, making sure to put the caps on the bottom so they don't leak. I grab my six cartridges and remove the caps while holding them upside down to minimize the leaking. Then I flip them over and install them, making sure that they click into place. Good. Now using some rubbing alcohol, I wipe down the area just to the left of the first hinge and just to the left of the third hinge. Then I'll attach my tubing clips on this frame just to the left of those hinges, holding them down for 30 seconds apiece. I'll route my tube flat along that frame and through those clips I installed. Then I'll adjust the slack to make sure the tube isn't too tight when I go to the left and not too loose when it goes all the way to the right. Now I've seen videos with different tubing routes, but this one seems to work best for me. Just making sure that the tubing stays flat and then a slight turn up with the sign tube on the top. The elbows where the tubing comes into the cartridges should be facing to the right, and this will help keep the tubes from twisting as the carriage moves to the left. Now once that's done, I'll make sure to open the ink shutoff and remove the vent plugs from the air chamber. Remember, we never want to operate the printer with those vent holes plugged. Then I'll go ahead and power the printer on, and I'll get a message saying that we didn't power down correctly. Now I'll click on Dismiss here, and from the home screen, I'll go into my maintenance menu and do a head cleaning. Once it's completed, I'll select no check, and then I'll head over to Photoshop and print three purge files. Now we can't close the lid anymore, but an empty Dynamite Gorilla ink bottle makes a perfect kickstand. After the final purge file, I'll do a nozzle check. If it's bad, I'll run another head clean and follow up with another three purge files, but this one's good to go, so let's get our sublimation paper installed and get a design printed off. And there we go, the scissors installed on the XP15000, and this will give me that added ink capacity and a visual representation of how much ink is in the system, and I don't have to worry about running it dry. Thanks for checking out the video. I'll put as much information as I can in the description. Until next time, guys, good luck and good night.